Now we are looking at another important topic, which is called bond valuation and analysis. Bond valuation and analysis. What is a bond? A bond is a debt instrument required the issuer to repay to repay to the lender a certain amount which is borrowed plus interest over a specified period of time. Now, of course, we know that there are various means by which an organization can decide to go into operation. So we can there are so many ways of raising funds, there are so many ways by which you can you can raise finance. And one of it is what we refer to as a bond instrument. Of course, we know that generally under under capital under capital budgeting, we know that a, that we can raise funds using two various methods, using two major methods, which is either you raise equity or you or you raise a debt. And we know that, of course, when you talk about capital mix, you know that for every organization to survive, it is preferable when you have a mix of equity and debt. So now, without much ado, when you talk about raising debt, you talk about that there are various means by which you can raise debt. And one of it is by using what we call a bond, by raising a bond. So what is a bond? And we have said that a bond is a debt instrument that is required by the issuer, issuer to repay the lender. Who, who are the issuer? Issuer are, are, are also referred to as the borrower, like the person that wants to really use the money. It is required that they pay the lender, the person with the person that the money is is coming out from them, the amount that is borrowed plus interest over a specified period of time. That is what we will refer to as bond. That's what we refer to as bond. So after we have defined what we refer to as bond, it is important that we look at some definition of terms under this bond valuation. There are some things that are that is important for us to know and understand for us in order for us to appreciate this topic better and let's look at some bas basically some definitions and number one we look at what we call a par value what is par value par value it is the stated amount par value is the stated amount of the bond it is also referred to as face value it's referred to as face value so it is what we can refer to as principal in other terms like it is the core value of the bond without taking interest into consideration like how much do we want to borrow then it is at the point of repayment that we now need to now consider okay what is the interest element on the amount that's borrowed. so the par value is the real value the worth of that bond that we are talking about now another thing we need to understand is coupon rates what is coupon rates what is coupon rates Coupon rate it is the stated annual rate of interest, stated annual rate of interest on the bond, e.g., a 9% coupon bond means that annual interest on the bond is 9% of the face value of the bond. When you hear what was something like a coupon rate, coupon rate is also known as interest. Coupon rate, you will agree when we are have when you when you were doing when you are doing what we call simple interest, you understand that there, are, there, 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 there is something that we refer to as interest. That is the additional amount of money that is payable for, for making use of a particular capital. So, and the same interest is what we refer to as what coupon rate. I said coupon rate is also known as interest rates. It's also known as interest rates. So coupon rate is also known as interest rate. So let's move on. Another one, another thing we need to understand is that zero, there's something we call zero coupon. There's something we call zero coupon bond. What is zero coupon bond? We say that these are bonds that do not pay any interest during their life. They don't pay any, that's why we call it zero coupon bond. That is, or what we, what we can refer to as say, no interest bond. No interest bond. So, having said that, we said that these bonds generally mature at face value. They mature at face value, but they are issued at a large discount to the face value. 
they are issued at the large discount to the face value. Hence, the return on such a bond is capital appreciation which is the difference between the issue price and the face value. Of course, when we look at, say, when we say zero coupon bond, we might be looking at it that, okay, for a company to issue a zero coupon bond, then where, where is the revenue coming from? We can say that where is the revenue coming from? We can say that how would they make their money back? Because we are lending out the capital. So where is the interest coming from? So, and we are saying that where the money is coming from, which is the return, is what we refer to as capital appreciation. And what is capital appreciation? Capital appreciation is the difference between the amount at which we issue the bond and the face value of the bond. The face value of the bond is the real worth of the bond, Why the issue price is the amount that we issue the bond. Itself. So the difference between the two is what we refer to as capital appreciation, which will come back to the entity as an inflow, as an inflow, or what we can say as a revenue. Another thing that we have is what we call a putable bond. What is a putable bond? Under this type of arrangement, bond holders has the right but not the obligation to sell the bond to the issuer at a predetermined price. They have the right but not the obligation. Now, when we go on, we are still going to define, okay, I think it's here also, callable bond. Callable bond. And we'll say that okay let's go on so what does this mean what does this mean this means that a put option increases this means that a put option increases the value of the bond to an investor since it provides the investor with protection against the bond trading against the bond trading below the put price it means that a put option increases increases the value of the bond to an investor when it, when there is a put option that means that the bond holder they have the right to sell the bond to the issuer at a predetermined price so what we are saying is that what in our in our financial reporting we have done something like what that we call um sale and lease back arrangement sale and lease back arrangement is a situation where where the owner of the asset has the right to buy again the asset after leasing it out. That is, the person has leased the asset after leasing the asset. So I have the right to go and say, okay, this asset that I have even leased for you now, that is for you. Now I want to buy it back. So now it is just to retain the value of the asset and to still have cash. That's just the strategy behind the sales and lease back arrangement. So we are saying that similar to sales and lease back arrangement, a pull option is that. We are saying here that the bond holder, he has the right, but not the obligation to sell the bond back to the issuer, back to the issuer at a predetermined price. So it's just as if the, the, the what's it called now? The bond holder, that is the person that now has the bond, the person that is meant to pay interest on the bond, is now giving the, the, the person now has the right to issue back the bond back to the person that sells it. He has the right to sell the bond to the issuer at a predetermined price. Don't forget that in this kind of arrangement, excuse me, in this kind of arrangement, the person that still issued the bond is still remain the principal owner of the bond. It's just that, it is just an arrangement, it's just an arrangement that helps the, the that helps this, the, the holder of the bond to be able to generate some amount of revenue from the issuer. So it means that the pull option increases the value of the bond to an investor since it provides the investor with protection against bond trading below the put price. That is, since the bond is still with the issuer, the investors are still safe. They, are, they, they, can, they can still feel secure that, okay, our bond is still with the company that, that has it. It's just that our bond is still with the company that has it. So as a result of that, we are sure that we are not, we are not on their trading. We are not under trading and the bond is not being issued below the normal put price. So this is the otherwise of a callable bond. A callable bond. A callable bond is a situation where the borrower has the right to repurchase the bond at a predetermined price at a certain time. The borrower is just like the opposite. Now here the borrower, the person that is collecting the bond, he has the right to repurchase. The person has the right to repurchase the bond at a predetermined price price at a predetermined price 
So let's look at what we call a premium bond. What is a premium bond? A premium bond, a bond having its market value greater than its par value is known as a premium bond. That is when your market value, when your market value is higher than your par value, then this comes to a premium bond. When your market value is higher than your par value, then you have a premium bond. If it is the other way around, that is when your market value is lesser than your par value, it's called a discount bond or what we can refer to as a discounted bond. So. I said that, that because of the inverse relationship between the yield and value, the market value, the market yield of a premium bond is less than the what? The coupon rate. The market premium of the market yield of the premium bond is usually lesser than a than the coupon rate. Now, let's just look at an example that further illustrates, that further buttresses the point that we are trying to raise. So we say here that. We say here that a bond, a bond with a face value of 1,000 Naira pays annual coupon rate of 8%. If the bond has yield to maturity of 10% and maturity of 5 years, this is the period. Now, we are asked to compute the current market value of the bond. Compute the current market value of the bond. So this is just a suggested solution of how we can approach this kind of question. So the first thing we need to say is that the market value of the bond is given by the PV of 18 era, the PV of 18 era due from year one to five, due from year one to five, plus the PV of the face value of 1000 era due in year five. What am I saying? How do we arrive at the 18 era? The 18 era is simply the 8% of 1000 era. If you do your calculation well, 8% of 1,000 error is simply, we give you 18 error. So that's how we arrive at the PV of 18 error, due from year 1 to 5, plus the PV of the face value, which is 1,000 error. Going back to the question, we saw that the face value is what? The face value is 1,000 error, and the interest, which is the coupon rate, is what? Is 8%. Now we can now go back to our MPV. MPV, so coupon also known as interest for year one to five on a cash flow of 80. So if you do your if you do your annuity using the annuity formula, you are going to have your DCF to be discounted cash, discounted cash flow at 10%. So your DCF will be 3.791, which gives you 3.791 multiplied by your cash flow. You have your PV of this. The first value at the end of year five, which is 1000 error cash flow, DCF at 10% for year 5, we give you 0.621, which gives us this. Addition of the two PV, you have 948.28, which is the market value of the bond. So now we're now saying here that, we're saying here that the market value of 924.28 is less than the face value of 1000 error. Can you see the market value of 9.924.28 is less than what than the face value of 10 1000 error because the yield to maturity of 10 percent is higher than the coupon rate of 10 percent so this situation is usually referred to as a discounted bond discounted bond yeah so remember i said that once your market value once your market value is higher than your face value then you have what we what we call a premium bond but if it is the other way around that is when your market value is lesser than your face value then we have what we call a discounted bond so this is a situation of a discounted bond because our market value is lesser than our face value so let's look at another example 
example two. So here we are saying that the following is a list of prices of zero coupon bonds of various maturity. So the one that mature in year one, we have this. In year two, we have this. Let's move on. Year three, we have this, and year four, we have this. So we have to determine determine the spot rate for each of the four years. That is, R one returns on year one, on year two, three, and four. And we say that these are the yield to maturity of each of these bonds. Now, the yield to, now solution. The yield to maturity of each zero is the rate of interest that makes the market value to grow to become the face value of maturity. We're just trying to define it here that it is the spot rate for the relevant year. So now let's do the calculation. Of course, we see that the yield to maturity, the YTM for year one is 943.4. And that's how we have this plus into one plus R1 raised to power one. Then we have the face value of 1000 error. Our interest rate is at 6%. Right? Let me confirm that. Oh. Okay. So if you do this very well, sorry, if you if you do this by making R1 the subject of the formula, if we decide to make R1 subject of the formula, if we solve this equation, we're going to have something like 0 0.06, which gives us something like 6%. And that's what we have here. So if you solve this equation, you are going to have the 6%. Yeah. So the same thing for R2. If you solve this equation, you have 5.5. For R3, you have this. And for R4, you have this so this is just a way of calculating the returns that is derivable or the zero coupon bond and remember we said something that when we're talking about the zero coupon bond in the definition that it is just what we refer to as capital appreciation that because there is no because there is no interest on it, so it is just the difference between the face value and the issued value the issued amount so when the face value when the when the face value is lesser than the issued price then we we'll have what we call the what the, the 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 rate and that's how we generate money so we are just trying to look at the effective rate of the difference between the face value and the actual amount that the share the stuff was issued that is the bond was issued critically let's look at another example A bond has a face value of 1000 error and is to mature in four years and offer a 6% coupon rate. The market yield is 7%. Now, using mean deviation, we are asked to estimate the revised price of the bond if the market yield increases to 7.4%. If the market yield increases to 7.4%. So, let's look at the solution. Here we say that the current price of the bond is estimated as follow. The current price of that bond. So let's see. The P which represents the price. 60. This 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 one this 1 1.07. Of course, I believe we know that it's the same thing as saying that 1 plus 0 0.07, which is the market yield. MY. That's market yield. This 60. 60 is as a result of 60 on to rise. 60 is as a result of 6%, which is the coupon rate on the face value of the bond. It will give you to give you 60. And that's how we come about this 60. So this one is for year one, this is for year two, this is for year three, this is for year four. Adding everything together, you have the price of the bond, which is 966.13. So we are saying that if the yield increases by 40%, so that means we have a 40 base point that is change in the price of the bond. We are saying that if the yield increases by 40%, so what happened? Then we now have percentage of change in price. Percentage of change in price. That is, we want to look at it. That what is the implication? What is the implication of the increase? What is the implication of the increase and how will it affect our calculations and the share price that we have? So we're saying that change in the increase in price, percentage of, of change in price is equal to 
the divided by one plus rate so our change in rate is simply 3.67 divided by one plus rate rate of zero of seven percent then multiplied by 0 0.004 that is for year four so if you do it very well you have what we call you have this you have one point 1.37 percent so this means that the modified duration approach predicts that the bond price will fall by approximately 1.37 percent in response to the 40 percent increase in yield in response to the 40 percent increase in yield so having said that then the revised price of course we are supposed to look at the revised price Having estimated that we can say that the revised price, the revised price will be 966.3, nine, nine, which we've gotten before, multiplied by the effect of the change, which is 1.3%, 1 1.37%, 1 then you have this. So the revised price is 952.89, which we can see that it is now lesser than the 9.66.13, which we had initially. So the revised actual will be what will be this. So now we are now changing it. Remember, we said that the that there should be a change in the question. They said something like that. Okay, they said that using a mean deviation that assuming that the yield will increase to seven point four percent. That is, the yield is increasing from seven percent. It is now seven point four percent, and that's what we try to do here. We try to look at the effect of the increase from seven percent to seven point four. And the effect of the increase was that our market yield has now reduced to 953 naira. So the observe, we can see that the observation here will be that the results are very close, and this could be expected when the change in yield is very small. So yeah, so we can see that this one is 953, and what we had before was okay. This is less than 966.13. So we can see that the result is very close, and why it is because the change is, uh, is just 0 0.4 percent sorry 0 0.04 that is ie that is four so the difference is just a four percent increase so which is very minute and that's why you see that the range the the the, the what's it called now the the difference between the answers they are not so wide yet and one thing now I, I also want you to note is that we also need to be careful that by the time we are doing our extrapolation in year one we see that we only considered we only considered the interest which is 60 year two interest year three interest but by the time you get to year four you have to consider the cap the principal as well so in year four we have to consider the principal so we can see that that's why we did use 60 and if you even go back to the one we did before you will see that when we got to but you see that when we got to year four year we also make use of so this one should be 1060 this is 1060 not 60 so yeah so you have to increase the capital also so that you can get this figure. so it is important we take note of that by the time we are solving a question on that bond valuation the value of the bond the the, the face value of the bond itself needs to be considered at the, in the last year at which the bond is going to is going to mature at which the bond is expected to mature 